that's for real. This one for those they forget in my city. This dog off the leash and it's ready to kill. Ah, yes. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Veterans Minimum. I'm your host, Nick Deus, at the Lame Shows. You can find me. Joining me after a little bit of a hiatus, my guy, A double L E M. What up? Time is not great, but nevertheless, we're here. Uh oh, how come? My boys on Talanta. Ah, <laughs> my, my boys PSG, baby. You, you want to support the evil empire? You can support the evil empire. But listen, I don't know what kind of evil empire you're talking about, but as the someone, guitar evil empire, <laughs> as, as as somebody who is financially invested in the sports betting markets. And the futures markets, you know, I am in predictive analytics and I have a ticket on PSG to win the Champions League. And yeah, the, the pants came off, Alan. Yeah. The I whole game imagine. changed when Mbappe got in, though. Stud, man. I don't think any, like when he gets the ball and like he just has that little switch like uh, pace wise, no one could compete with him. Like he just blazes past the fans. I have no choice. Like you better be right. Like if you're a midfielder, like, you just know if like if he's starting. You're probably gonna get booked at some point. Just get ready for that yellow card. Get my one tackle and then whatever happens, happens. But I felt so bad for Neymar up until Mbappe came in because it felt like he was trying to do it all. He was doing quite a fight. Yeah. I know the finish wasn't there, but like, Oh my yeah. god, he was trying to be <laughs> fucking crazy, bro. He's going in on breakaways and shit. He's intercepting passes. That first one was painfully yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. But they they pulled through and they got they got they should make the final. Like I think they could be Atletico or Red Bull Leipzig, but Damn, if they got play like if they got play Bayern or Barca or Man City in the final, that's where you're gonna be sweating. Yeah, well, all, all I need them to do is get to the final, and then there's there's hedge situations that we could do. And it also helps that everything's one leg, which makes it more exciting. Like I wonder, maybe UEFA will look at this like maybe. Well, I don't know if they can because like this is neutral. Yeah, like, I don't think that during club season they could have it where it's like one tie because it's like both teams need to have a home leg. Yeah, that's so. true. But it's fun. It does. It does have a a international soccer feel to it. Right. That's what what I was feeling today. Yeah. Because I know they played last week, but like most of them were already decided for the most Decent part. Decent majority of them. Yeah. Yeah. But with this one, if it, it did feel very urgent, and I right. loved it. I loved right. it. But yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, one man. NBA is gonna adopt. Maybe they, I heard M Silver might do like some sort of cup. I don't know if you heard about that. Yeah, so there was reports about doing something for all the teams that didn't make the bubble. Mm -hmm. Kind of doing like a, I guess, the NIT of the NBA. No, I not about that, but in the future, like uh, like a cup between November and December. No, I, I don't know. That. Some like mini competition they might do, like a separate thing. I got no more details about it. But yeah. Yeah. But for what would be would they be? I don't know. I think they're like? I think they're intrigued. I think they're intrigued by you know how Europe does it like an FA Cup thing but I think because I think people are intrigued it's how because I think the bubble like NBA wise has built a lot of intrigue I think it's been success so far oh I mean it's been fantastic yeah. the games the games mean something mm -hmm. for the most part especially uh, I've been watching a lot of the Blazers I'm also who big, isn't yeah you're not watching the Blazers what are you doing your yeah, life? <laughs> yeah 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 I've always been a I, I have league pass for Portland right for years now right. me me and shout to my guy Josh hopefully we don't get in trouble for this but mm -hmm. we uh we share codes and whatnot, and my buddy Danny too. But it was it was because of Portland, and I know they have a lot of nationally televised games. But I think League Pass is awesome, bro. It's a Tuesday night. Right. It's nine thirty. It's not on TV for the most part. Because West Coast has a lot of good teams. All the best. All the best teams are on the West Coast. Pretty much. All the best teams are on the West Coast. And, and <laughs> some, yeah. some Celtic fans like shaking his fist right now. Like, Yo, let me just ask you a general. <laughs> yeah. A general question about Damian Lillard. Okay. You saw the beef that he had with Pat Beverly yeah. and those guys, and Paul George. Yeah, how do you, how do you feel about a player like Damian Lillard and what he stands for? Because he's he seems to be an OG in the sense that he doesn't want to partner up. He's been saying this for years right. now. He got at Paul George like, "Yo, bro, you run away from the grind," right. and then he comes back with back to back games, mm -hmm. puts up. 61 and then puts up a 50 spot like yeah i try to look at it both ways obviously i respect the player sticking with the franchise through dark times but at the same time i can understand if a player is really frustrated and sees no direction where it's like okay i leave like i hate to bring up obj but obj would be one example that comes to mind and it's probably several other stars but yeah, I can understand. Or like, how about Jamal Adams? Like, if it's like, okay, there's no direction here. It might be three, four years before maybe even like think about playoffs. 
and it's just uh, i just need a change of scenery so you go look at it from that instance but the other thing is like wow we play one team like where do you see that anymore like i like i kind of compared to steven gerrard not to make another soccer reference but like lillard and gerrard just sticking with that one team where it's just like they've underachieved quite a bit and you just see rivals and you can be tempted by rivals because yeah, at one point yeah. gerrard was supposed to go to chelsea so i assume lillard's probably had opportunities whether it be the lakers or you know, whatever team maybe miami from a few years ago who knows but you know you know you have to commend it just to stay there because it's like this is my city and you, you're the guy there and, but I think Portland hasn't suffered too much, right? Not, I feel like they've been fairly competitive. They've for, been they've been a very very good team mm. for a long time now. Right. You know, like the that shot he hit against the Rockets many years back, like that was like five years ago, bro. Oh, yeah. um, then what he did to to Paul George in the Thunder mm-hmm. last year, I just think that. The one thing with Lillard, and now he's getting a lot more national attention. I mean, last year he did with the shot that he yeah. hit, and they also went to the Western Conference Finals right. last but, year. But man, could you imagine if they played the Lakers in the first round? That's going to be the craziest series. Yo, that I, might be the greatest 8 1 ever. Yeah, listen, I've been watching a lot of Portland, I've been watching a lot of the Lakers. Mm-hmm. I'd be shook if I'm LeBron and company. I, I don't think it'd be crazy. I put up a poll on my Instagram page. I've been doing these like random daily yeah. polls. Like, some are serious, some are like really stupid. Uh-huh. And I was like, yo, would you be surprised if the Blazers beat the Lakers? And a lot of people said no, which surprised me because usually people just see it from the outside and they go, oh, one versus eight. But I think this year with the bubble, and I think it's a good segue into what I really want to ask you about the NFL. Mm-hmm. I think with the bubble, like it don't matter what your seating is because there's no home court. Yeah. Game seven is going to be in the same place it was yeah. game one through six. It's actually all about matchups now. It's all about matchups in healthy. Portland. Yeah. It healthy, yeah. yeah. They have nine guys that they could put out there that can get buckets and seem to have balls in big moments. Yeah. And this team, last year they went to the Western Conference Finals. I talked about it on the episode this week. Shouts to my guy Chris for joining me. They're the only team in NBA history to get swept. In the in in a conference finals, but also have a fifteen point lead in every single one of those games, and to make matters worse, they were all in the second half that they had these leads. Mm-hmm. But going back to Lillard, he's a guy who all these years you have Chris Paul in the West, you have Steph Curry in the West, you have uh, Harden, you Russell got Westbrook. Westbrook, right? You have all these like alpha point guards. Now you got now you got Moran Doncic. Yeah, well, Luca's there now, and I think with Lillard, Lillard's been doing this, bro. Lillard's been a beast. He's a gamer. Man. Yeah, he he's really a total is. Gamer, and yeah, you just have to respect what he stands for. But I do want to defend Paul George a little bit because I think in those situations with Indiana and OKC, he kind of saw the right on the wall. It's like I can't see myself evolving here, so that's why I don't mind him bouncing. So I see from both perspectives. I don't. It's just I think it's a cool beef, but. You know, I, I'm cool with both guys. Like it's yeah. it's really refreshing yeah. that there's animosity yeah. in the NBA. I think Pat Beverly should be the one to get criticized. Yeah, because yeah. everyone's like super lovey dovey, and everyone trains together in the mm-hmm. off season and shit. Where Lillard's just saying, "Yo, yeah. I'm coming for your heads." Right. Like a couple nights ago, weren't people hyping up like Jimmy Butler and T.J. Warren? They had and, a they had an incident and back really in, happened. in yeah. January. Yeah, they had an incident where they were kind of just yeah. talking shit to each T.J. other. T.J. Warren, the Tracy McGrady of the bubble. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they're gonna play in round one all right maybe things pa- will spark pacers up. heat yeah jimmy butler gets things going man you know i'm representing marquette today jimmy butler oh i've seen him play a bit he hit a couple of buzzer beers against st john's oh man yo i think i think miami is another team that is being slept on right the consensus across the board is the two la teams yeah. and milwaukee and then there's a little bit of buzz about the celtics and then now more momentum is starting to pick up on toronto right. but i just think that miami they're, they're deep they're deep as hell. They got the player himself, Tyler Hero. He's out Tyler, here. <laughs> Tyler Hero, all NBA, first teamer on and off they the court. Him. If you don't know, now you know. You they know got, what I'm they saying? got your white shooter, Duncan Robinson. I, I swear, Duncan Robinson played for Michigan at least seven years. Like He was like the Perry Ellis of guards. Like, Duncan <laughs> Robinson was always on Michigan. I'm like, wait, this guy actually made it to NBA? You guys boss about this. Duncan Robinson just always was in college Bro, basketball. Perry Ellis <laughs> was on Kansas for literally <laughs> seven years, it seemed like. But hey, I grew up a Heat fan. I'm I'm not gonna say I'm a diehard now, but you know I have a soft spot for him. But I don't know, I really like like Toronto. I think it's exciting. But. Yo, so I actually a little old school here. I got notes prepared because of you know using the cameras and shit. Go to YouTube to watch. The some pandemic of the clips. has hit us hard. <laughs> Go to the YouTube to watch uh, some of the stuff. That's youtubecom slash veterans minimum cheap plug. Yo, so I'm talking about the bubble in the yeah. NBA. How there is no home court advantage. There's mm-hmm. no fans. 
the NFL, no fans in some place. I know you were talking about Atlanta before we started Atlanta recording. Atlanta wants to do like 20% because the South is like, the South is like its own country. At this yeah. Point. yeah. Yeah. It yeah. wouldn't surprise you. Tampa and what? Well, I don't think anyone really cares what they do. I'm sorry, Jacksonville fans, but like you guys don't even have like an audience. <laughs> like it doesn't even matter. Like yeah, you know, I, I assume Jaguars want to tank. Like so, I just think the South. Like you heard Jerry Jones today with some of the statements. He's like, oh, I fully expect us to play with fans. So I don't know. I think the South is just operating all. Yeah, they're, they're 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 different down there yeah. for sure. So what? How do you? How should I phrase this? What teams do you think benefit benefit from? No fans. It's got easy chargers. Yeah. Probably the Rams to some extent too. Like you gotta look at the LA. Like my best friend lives in LA and he just talks about like people really don't care too much about football unless USC is really good. Mm. It's just because it's just know, it's the weather or culture. It's like it's pretty much a basketball, baseball, and college football town. Like NFL hasn't really caught it. As good as the Rams were I don't think they're gonna be that good this year. But like as the Rams, you know, their success over the past few years, still didn't really catch on. And we all know about the Chargers. Like. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's a really interesting point because there's not only a lot of shit to do in L.A. Under different circumstances, yeah. of course. But it's the weather. You're on the beach pretty much. That's what he said. He's and, like, dude, the beach. And there's so many teams, bro. There's a lot of teams in just the state of California. But in L.A. And it's a also. basketball town. Yeah. And it's a basketball town, yeah. too. Like, the Lakers are always going to run rough shop over everything. Did you crack your phone? No, I did not. All right, good, because I just got a new phone, thank God, because my shit was going through hell and back. My shit had the Spider-Man edition exclusive. Ooh, it was rough. Bro, I had, a, I had a hole in my phone at the bottom of my phone. Uh, I could like literally I could not go more than like two hours. So I was just like, yo, this has to get fixed. I had it for about, I think, nine months in the shape it was. I can't blame the pandemic for that. People would watch me streaming, and they're like, bro, get a new phone. I'm like, I don't have $900 to just drop. But Chargers, what, what other teams? You said ja- I mentioned Jaguars before because you gotta look at teams that have, like are known like their home crowds just don't have much of an effect. Like hell, I could say Atlanta. When Atlanta is not that good, that there's pictures of their Mercedes Benz dome and it's just like no, like there's barely like there's just seat just empty. Oh, we also mentioned the Redskins. Oh, football team. Whoa! Oh, God, RP. Delete, <laughs> delete, delete. You know what, man? I've been, <laughs> I've been, I've been making fun of people over the past week. It's like, yo, how are we gonna approach Washington here? But I want to say blatantly, football team all the time, just to, like make fun of the whole situation. And what do you know? First chance, I've bought you. <laughs> it's like, it's like people still saying San Diego like two years later. But I, I've called the Raiders Oakland a bunch of times, maybe because that yeah. that's still like super fresh. Right. But the football team, like. Like their fan base is yeah. just been, they've been jaded for like a decade now. So I think that's another team. And that, dude, they also just cut Geis. The well, they Geis had to, I know, yeah. but the Geis experiment was I really liked him coming out of LSU. Mm-hmm. He was the guy that filled in for Leonard Fournette after Fournette right, bounced. Right, right. And there were times when he was with LSU where Geis would come in and relieve Fournette right. or they would do like split carries and you would watch Geis and you're like, yo, this dude is nasty. Mm-hmm. Then he gets hurt in the preseason. And then comes back, has a couple of really good games, then gets hurt again. Yeah. And then he has this domestic violence thing. Yeah. And it's just they had to cut ties for sure. Happened March, too. Yeah. Yeah, I think everything has just yeah. been slow with the yeah. pandemic and shit. Yeah. But those, those are the teams I'll look at. You know, you look at, quote, unquote, the football team. I think the obviously the LA teams, Jacksonville. And, yeah, I'll probably put Atlanta up there because – you look at pictures like in December, like that that stadium's empty. So, what, what teams then on the flip side do you think are going to get hurt by this? Ooh, Philly comes to mind. Obviously, Kansas City, Baltimore, Seattle, the Saints. Ooh, Saints are big. Hey, but it's the South. You, like, yeah, I, I, like I'm just putting the South in in another That's very category fair. because I I just don't know how they're just doing their own thing at this point. It's weird, but but you look at a team like the Eagles, especially. I feel like because I made because I've been to Philly so many times, I've covered games there. That environment, it's it's intimidating. I mean, shit, they went all the way to the Super Bowl because they had to go teams had to go in there to right. play. So it's definitely and trust me, man. Yeah. I've seen yeah. my Baltimore dreams. too. Baltimore, Baltimore is a big one. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's big, yeah. You know, we mentioned Kansas City. Like, we'll see right away. You know, Texans Chiefs less than mm. a month away. We'll see. I'm really curious to see how the sports books are going to be handicapping these because they always give you three points for home field advantage, mm-hmm. right? So like when a team is a six point favorite and they're at home mm-hmm. on a neutral, they'd be a three point favorite. Mm-hmm. So now, what do you do with that? Is that already factored in? Is it not? 
I don't really know. I believe right. it's a seven point line week one. Last time that I checked. So what you're telling me is that if it was a home field, if if you were able to get it 70, 80, I don't know how many people fit uh-huh. at Arrowhead, then they'd be a 10-point favorite. I don't know if that's right. I'd probably take the Texans in that situation because Watson's one of the better quarterbacks when he's catching points like that, double yeah. digits. So I'm very intrigued. I also think from, from a win total perspective, over-unders, I think that's a big factor too. Where Patriots come to mind. You got Clue New England in there as Dude, well. what about yeah. Buffalo? Ooh. Buffalo. You yeah. don't want to play Buffalo in like November, December right. when That's they're at the... Environment. Yeah. yeah. Is this still the Ralph? I believe so. But then again, I feel like every stadium or majority of them have been commercialized. Yeah. Like I think Link, it was like, like the Lincoln era. Financial Field. Yeah. Like we lost my last stadium. I don't know what it's called now, but it's something very commercialized. <sighs> like, dude, when they took the Georgia Dome away, I was like, yeah, man. Mercedes Benz. What was the biggest moment in the Georgia Dome? I know I've asked you this. Oh, before. It has, it's gotta be Julio's eighty yarder, bro. It's the clinched Hul- the Super Bowl. It's when oh, Goldberg Bill- slammed Hogan, brother. <laughs> you might as well just say when Snooky did that WrestleMania thing. So, uh, <laughs> Yo, that was great on Nitro. Uh, oh man, classic. But, but yeah, I just feel like a lot of stadiums now. Uh, if you want to look at advantage, yeah, Buffalo's a good one. We should probably have mentioned Buffalo, Minnesota. I think. Minnesota oh, has they had a they really underrated good, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I think um, maybe teams, everyone's going to be affected by this. I'm really curious to see what happens with injury reports. Like, how soon do you need to report it? Is it going to be a mad scramble if you're playing fantasy football Sunday morning? It's like 1130, Ezekiel yeah. Elliott, COVID, yeah. he's out. Right. You know, I, I talked about this on, on the last episode, too, where Philip Rivers was being interviewed and they asked him about the protocol for for COVID. And he said, you're telling me if we happen to go to the Super Bowl this year, I test positive for COVID on Friday. I'm going to have to miss the Super Bowl. I've waited 18 years for this. All right. Because you look at like the whole concussion thing with the, like their protocol could be a bit dicey sometimes. Like someone takes a big hit and they don't really take them to get tested, you know, checked out. So like, so is, is COVID testing the new concussion? I don't want to because because obviously COVID you could you could you know, obviously you could die from it. So I I hope they could take more serious you know measures towards it. But it's just I don't know like we don't know the inner details of it. Mm-hmm. But I get Phil Rivers' frustration. But then again, it's like you don't want this spreading. The whole purpose of this is that it cannot spread. That's why things are so isolated right now. That's why you won't see a lot of media. Obviously, you won't see fans. So. Uh, do you think we make it through the entire NFL season? Because like, college college football conferences are canceling left and right. The Pac-12 yeah. canceled. Big Ten. The Big Ten canceled. And like you said, the SEC is like, we're going to get up and running. Yeah. Nick's and I think, it's, I think it's a bigger deal than people are making it out to be. Like, I think it's massive. Also, if, if you're not a college football fan, mm-hmm. this is massive for the NFL, too. Yeah. In terms of valuing talent. Yeah. yeah. Dude, think about this. This time last year, Joe Burrow was projected to be a fourth or fifth round pick. Mm -hmm. Then he becomes a number one pick. Same thing with Baker. Kyler Murray. Mm -hmm. The list goes on and on. So we know about Trevor Lawrence. We know about Justin Fields. But who's going to be that random guy that from a D2 school that plays himself into being a top 10 pick? Whoever's lucky to draft them in the sixth round. Yeah, that's going to be... I'm super intrigued by that because I think you're going to find a lot of gems. You're going to find those guys that should have been first or second round picks going in five and six. And I wonder how much teams maybe look at the Lewis Riggs, the Dan Chermayas of the world, like the real analysts, mm. the most highly guard ones, like how much input are they going to take? Because in past years, you see teams, they kind of like, uh, they're a bit standoffish to like the main media outlets and just, you know, draft analysts what you know Todd McShay Mel Kuyper maybe be how much they're going to take their advice this year because you have to take an account like, like like every team has some affiliation with PFF like PFF now will tell you like we are have connections with all 32 teams mm-hmm. so uh, I, I wonder how much the media is now going to have more of I guess an influence on how organizations operate but that's why you bring back like I. That's why I totally hate the Jamal Adams trade because it's like okay, you're getting an established player. Okay, maybe you'll be in cap hell, but it's just okay. You're getting rid of picks. First off, Seattle has. You look at their draft history the past few years; they have botched a lot of first round picks, and it's just like 
and their position, who knows who they're going to get. And, like, it's hard to evaluate. I shot a video about the trade, and I talked about how from 2013 to 2017, I guess you could say the, the Legion of Boom era yeah. of the Seahawks, the most successful run right. that they've had as a franchise, won a Super Bowl, went to a Super Bowl, constantly a, a bi-week team for the yeah. most part. They were a threat. They had one first-round draft pick, and it was like Effendi, Effendi. And he's been told bust. Yeah. yeah. They traded. They kept trading them away. They would or trade they draft them away. running back. Or they would draft, yeah. <laughs> for sure, so, Petty. This was a team who, when they made this move for Jamal Adams, they've kind of gotten used to not having first-round picks anyway. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you're the Jets... Like, it's an all-time fleecing, even if it doesn't work out, mm. bro. Like, even if all the guys you draft... And he didn't want to be there, so... Exactly. Yeah. And you had no leverage. When right. the guy is literally telling you for the last 18 months... Like, he told the main beat writer, uh, Manish... I've always been his name. Yeah, Madoff. Manish, yeah. Ma- Madoff. 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 <laughs> that might be worse than the R word. <laughs> oh, yeah. Made off. Yeah. Oh, man. But he literally did an interview, and then two days later, he got traded. Like, he just did an interview saying, yeah, I don't think Adam Gase is the right guy to lead this team. And it's like, all right, two, the year, two days later, we got to let you go. Bro, he did everything he could to get out of there for right. 18 months. And the fact that you got that return back. And you got McDougal, who's a really good safety. Yeah, I don't solid. think a lot of people are. He's not Jamal Adams. Yeah. Then again, there's not a lot of them. Yeah, he, I think He's not one of those guys on Tampa that was good in Tampa. Just said, yeah. 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 yeah, and then he goes to Seattle, and, and him and, and Diggs, when they got him coming over from the Lions. Yeah. I thought that was a really good move. But just that middle of the field, Bobby Wagner and Jamal Adams. Like, I, like if I'm a receiver, I really don't want to run routes across the middle. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you probably got the two best players at their position on your defense. Especially with Keekly now retired. And, um, yeah, Jamal Adams probably up there, yeah. I think it's Adams and Derwin James. Those are two guys. And then linebacker, I really think it's Wagner. And then is a drop. All right. I'm trying to do it. Like, I love Darius Leonard. I love Deion Jones, but I can't put him up there. Like, I think Fred Warner is someone to keep your eye also, on. Also, Wagner is super durable, too. Yeah, dude. he doesn't miss tackle. That's crazy. Doesn't miss tackle, like doesn't miss snaps, doesn't miss games. He's just always out there. Uh, Richard Sherman said best. If like that defense wasn't so stacked, he would have won a defensive player of the year at some point. But they, the whoever, the panel kind of held that against him. Sorry, you're part of the stacked defense. We can't. You can't be the defensive player of the year. 